Today, we're going to be looking at adding fractions with different denominators using the butterfly method. For this exercise, you're going to need a pen, piece of paper and your brain switched on. Now you already know lots about fractions. For instance, you know what a denominator is. It's the number that goes below the bar and tells us how many equal parts fractions divided into. The numerator is a number that goes above the bar and that tells us how many equal parts we're using. Then equivalent, we know that means it's equal to an improper fraction, which means the numerator is larger than the denominator. A mixed number fraction, which is a whole number and a fraction and we know how to compare and order fractions. We even know how to add fractions with the same denominator, because we know that when adding fractions with the same denominator, the denominator stays the same. So, 3 fifths plus 1 fifth, we know the denominator stays the same. And we just add the 3 plus 1, which obviously we know is 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 fifths is our answer. And this can be shown using a pictorial representation. 3 fifths add 1 fifth equals 4 fifths. But what happens when the denominators are different? Well, we can use something called the butterfly method. And it is really simple. What we do is we cross multiply the denominator by the numerator. So in this case, we've got three times one and three times one is three. Then we do the same with the opposite side. Six times two and six times two is 12. Now we always put the answer above our numerator. So we know that that's the answer. Then to find the denominator, we do three times six. Now three times six is 18. So now what we have is two new fractions with the same denominator. So we have 12 eighths and three eighteenths. Now we know this is much simpler now that the denominators are the same. So we know that 18 will be our denominator and we know that 12 plus three is 15. So the answer is 15 eighteenths. Now we can show this pictorially. This is the answer, 15 eighteenths. The red represents the 15. And if we look at our two thirds, and we also look at our one sixth, we can see that when we add them together, they are equivalent in size to 15 eighteenths. Now, if you look at the second bar down, we can see that split into six pieces. And five of those six pieces are colored in. So while the answer is 15 eighteenths, the equivalent fraction to 15 eighteenths is five sixths. Let's look at another one. So we have two sevenths and one third. Now, as before, we're going to use the butterfly method. So we cross multiply our denominator by our numerator. So seven times one is seven. And remember the answer goes above the numerator. Then we do the same to the other side. Three times two. Well, three times two is six. And we write the answer above the denominator. Then finally, we multiply the two denominators. So seven times three equals 21. So now again, we have two new fractions. We have six 21 and seven 21. And six 21 and seven 21 is what we're going to add together. Now, again, because we're adding, we know that the denominator will stay the same. And we know that six plus seven equals 13. So the answer to six 21 and seven 21 is 13 21. And again, we can show this in pictorial form. So here's the answer in pictorial form. We have 13 21. And then let's look at two sevenths. So we have two parts colored in of our seven. And 
one third. Now, when we add these two together, we can see that it is the same length as our answer of 1321. However, this isn't an equivalent fraction because as you can see, while they match up, there isn't a whole piece. So we can't simplify this any more than 1321. Now it's your turn to be a superhero. Look at the calculations in a red box and solve them using the butterfly method. Now remember, if you get stuck, you can always pause the video, rewind and work through the examples again. Good luck. Don't forget to tweet your answers to at learn with Mr. Ed. Subscribe now and don't forget to watch our other videos.